Hello everybody, welcome to the first episode in my devlog series. Over the course of this series, I'm going to be creating a Minecraft minigame server like Hypixel, starting from scratch, and I'm going to be sharing my journey with you guys here on YouTube. So here in this first devlog, I kind of just want to talk about my plan for the project, where I want to go with it, and some of the stuff I've learned about how servers like Hypixel run their networks. Now, I do apologize, this first devlog is going to be very technical. I really want to focus on the solution I've made, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So if you're not a fan of technical devlogs, this one probably isn't for you. But in future, I'm also going to do a couple more videos focused on the design. Like I think the next one, I kind of have an idea for the first mini game I want to create, and I talk more about that in the next video. But this one is going to be very focused on the technical and exactly how my uh, solution for running a server network works. So the first thing I kind of wanted to figure out is how do big servers do it? How do server networks like Hypixel and even, I know nobody plays there anymore, but even Mindplex, you know, we, we all played on Mindplex at one point, how they manage their servers and how they create a seamless experience for hundreds of thousands of players to play concurrently. It's very seamless, it's very nice for the user, and I'm, I was very curious on how the servers manage to accomplish this, especially with Minecraft extremely limiting server technology which is really kind of a pain and you have to use third-party software and even for small SMPs like with your friends you're gonna need to use third-party software otherwise your performance is gonna be completely abysmal and it's gonna be a struggle to play without lag so uh, it took a bit of digging because there isn't really much information on the internet about how servers like Hypixel work but I managed to find some old threads and things on Hypixel forums and around other parts of the internet that kind of gave me an idea of how these servers Hypixel in particular manage their server networks. Basically how they do it is they create containers with their server software. And if you don't know what a container is, don't worry, I'll explain in a minute. They create containers with their server software and they dynamically allocate those using a service like Kubernetes or some other kind of container manager. Hypixel has a whole bunch of different servers that they mesh all together with a proxy. Now I'm sure a lot of us have seen this kind of thing before. We've all probably set up a bungee cord server at some point or played on a network with a few servers connected together. And usually you just have one main server and then like a couple other servers that players can join when they want to but it seems like Hypixel is actually doing something a bit bigger because they have so many players this all needs to happen extremely fast and it would be a huge waste of money to have all these servers going all the time so it seems like what they do is they dynamically create and destroy servers while players are playing essentially what that means is that Hypixel always has the right amount of servers but they're never paying for extra servers or having moments where players can't play because ever the servers are full and I kind of wanted to create recreate create that with my own technology and I think I found a way to do it using three quite incredible pieces of tech. One of them is Docker, the other one is Kubernetes, and the third one is RabbitMQ. Now I'll explain what all three of these things are in a second, but basically what you have to know, I found a way to use these in a way that allows us to do essentially the same thing as Hypixel. Now starting off with Docker, basically what Docker allows you to do is it allows you to put your application, so in this case our Minecraft server, into a container. And that container is kind of like a little box that has everything that application, so our Minecraft server that has everything that Minecraft server needs to run. So it has Java, it has all those things, all packaged up in a nice little box. And what this means is that you can go to any computer anywhere, no matter if it's Linux, if it's Windows, if it's Mac OS, if it's, you know, a Raspberry Pi or a desktop, it doesn't matter what it is. You can do a simple little Docker command and Docker will pull that container from the cloud with your application in it, so with our Minecraft server in it, and run it. So you don't have to, you don't have to worry about installing Java, you don't have to worry about anything. Everything just works no matter where you are. And this is really powerful because it allows us to use another service called Kubernetes. And what Kubernetes does is essentially manage a whole bunch of these Docker containers. So what we can do is use this to dynamically create and destroy our Docker containers. Now, Kubernetes can be a bit more complicated than that, but that's all we really need it for in this scenario because what we wanted to accomplish was to have servers that can be created and destroyed as players need them. And what Kubernetes allows us to do is do that with our Docker containers. So our process can be packaged this server application into a Docker container and then use Kubernetes to create and destroy them as we need them. Now, the third piece of the puzzle here is not as important as the other ones because really a lot of different applications could do this and there's a hundred thousand different ways that we could have this work but the question is how do we have all these little containers talk to each other and that is where RabbitMQ comes in now RabbitMQ is a messaging queue server essentially what that means is your applications can send and receive messages through RabbitMQ this can work as our messenger between all the servers so let's say we have a lobby server and 10 players on that server want to play Bedwars so they click on the NPC and on the back end that server says to the RabbitMQ server hey I have 10 
players that are looking for a Bed Wars game. And then what we can do is we can have some kind of matchmaking service and that can read those messages from the lobby server on RabbitMQ. And it can go, hey, 10 players want to play Bed Wars. Okay, well, we can fit five players in each Bed Wars lobby. So we're going to need two Bed Wars lobbies. And then it can create two Bed Wars lobbies. And then those Bed Wars servers can look at the RabbitMQ server, say, hey, these, these five players want to play here. These five players want to play here. And we can connect everyone to those two servers and it all works. So essentially, RabbitMQ is acting as the messenger between the servers to keep everything connected. Now, this isn't the only way we could have done that. I could have done it in many different ways, but this seemed like a good option because RabbitMQ is event based and it's also extremely stable. So it doesn't really crash. It's very, very reliable. Now, that's pretty much everything I want to talk about in this devlog. Now, in the next devlog, I'm going to start developing the first mini game. So that'll be a bit more focused on the design of the game and it might be a bit more interesting to people who aren't as curious about the tech stuff. So stick around for that. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any ideas for mini games or anything that I implement or just stuff you want to see in the future of the devlog, I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to hear your comments. So just let me know in the comments. Other than that, thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.